These are three ways that you can make your writing way more fun. Welcome to the Narrative Inc. podcast. My name is Sam and this is Colton. And you know, today we got a really fun topic ahead of us. But before we dive into that, if you like what you're seeing and you like what we do, leave a like, comment down below. We'd love to talk to you guys and check out in the description all of our social media. We have a website up and running and we have an Etsy store if you want to check out for more writing advice and supplies and stuff like that. Let's make writing more fun. Yeah. So how could we make writing more fun? Well, these three tips I think will be really helpful because it's not just the regular everyday tips of like, oh, just, you know, I don't know. I can't think of it. It's not like, you know, sit down and, you know, prime your writing because that's like a good thing to do. But like, you know, if you think about enjoying your writing, there's a lot more that goes into it than just the physical activity of writing. Yeah. Because we learned, I learned doing NaNoWriMo, that's grueling. And yeah. that's not the part I love so much. The yeah. part I love is the story that I'm making and what I'm experiencing with that. So, yeah. Well, and I've, I've talked in the past music and really like making playlists and stuff like that. And those are really, those are really good. And those do make it more fun. But I feel like that gives you more of a flow. The way that I'm thinking and that we've discussed of making your writing more fun, number one is to gamify the experience. Brandon Sanderson does this. I do this. A bunch of authors do this where take your word count and turn it into like experience points for like a video game or just seeing that number go up is really fun. At least for me, as somebody who, who likes seeing those numbers get bigger, every time I hit like 10,000 words or I'm about to pass 300,000 words of all my writing in general, these are really exciting things to me. It's like I've leveled up as a writer, as an author. Have you done this at all? Has it helped you? To an extent, and what I can liken it to is the human brain really likes hitting milestones. Yeah. The human brain likes achievement. Your brain is designed to release those, release those chemical signals of, um, you know, pleasure and happiness whenever you complete a task. Yeah. You love completing tasks. That's why you always feel good after you've accomplished something big. So when it like when it comes down to it with making stuff a game, a good example. I've been playing uh, one of my new favorite video games a lot recently. It's Moonlighter. It's mm. a uh, roguelike like dungeon delving game, but you're also that's just half of the game. The other half of the game is you're running a store and you're selling oh, okay. the artifacts you find in the dungeon and you're finding out what's the right market price, how much things are worth, how much people like things, and you're taking care of your customers and all this stuff. And whenever, like, I love the, the action-packed, you know, dungeon delving, <laughs> fighting monsters part, but running the shop is just so fun because I get to, like, type in what number I think this thing is worth, and then I get to see people's reaction to it, like, oh, that's a good price, and then they buy it, and then I make money. And it's just, it's so satisfying to see the little, like, gold coin counter increase every day. Yeah. It's, so just, you know, adding that, looking at it that way, looking at it instead of, like, oh, I got to sit down and I got to write X amount of words. If you look at it, like, with that experience point thing that, like, Brandon Sanderson does, where you're just typing your word count and, oh, I'm so close to 10,000 words. I'm going to hit that 10,000 word mark. And then you hit it and you just feel good. Yeah. So what you're saying is this game is like a job. I don't want to think about it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hopefully I didn't ruin that for you. <laughs> okay. Number two is experience and using our life experiences and experience what our characters are doing in the books. Sam, do you have a good example for this of something that we could talk about? Great example um, if you feel like you're not relating to your character in this scene, like for example, you're writing a character and they're learning to sword fight so they can fight their nemesis, right? Or whatever. But you've never sword fought outside of, you know, picking up a stick in the backyard and hitting your brother a couple of times. Maybe go out and learn some sword fighting. You know, they teach fencing, mm -hmm. they teach HEMA there. You can go buy a foam sword from the dollar store and just run around a park with a friend or even a lightsaber and just, you know, pretend you're a Jedi, right? And just getting that physical activity, that experience, when you sit down to write that scene, you're going to be able to capture that th thought in your mind of, oh, how did your muscles feel when you were, when that pressure of the blade on blade was happening? Yeah. How, how did your breath feel? How were your lungs? How can you describe your character's breathing during that physical exertion? Yeah. 
it's it's kind of like with guns. A lot of people don't realize the recoil and the sound and everything that happens after you shoot a gun. Movies and everything, they do not give a good idea, at least most don't, of what it's like to actually shoot a gun. And same with sword fighting. I bet you'd be surprised at how exhausting it is to be swinging that sword around and, and running around with it. Most characters would not be able to actually do what people are saying to do, except if they have superpowers, which, you know, most fantasy does. Yeah. Um, but even just for the realism of it, people really appreciate that. I remember hearing somebody talk about how they were reading a book where this person was making a barrel. And the reader had never made a barrel or understood what, how to make a barrel, but just the act of reading how they did it and each step and meticulously did it was really interesting to them. And, and readers will know if you know what you're talking about, whether you've done really good research or whether you've actually experienced it. I say it's, it's really important. And just connecting yourself to your characters in that world is really cool. You never flown before? Go skydiving. You know, feel the wind in your face and how it does. It may be expensive, but uh, make a tax write-off. I don't know. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, number three is write what you love. Um, th this is really important because if we're not writing what we love and what we want to really experience and appreciate in a story... I don't think it'll be as meaningful or even as fun. Uh, me right now, I am making, I'm writing characters that are have to meticulously write out runes to do a spell. And for me, when I think of magic and wizards and, and all that different stuff, I think of they have to learn it and really understand what it is. And so I'm I'm learning and understanding what these runes mean and how to create a spell and really trying to make it realistic as realistic as magic can get yeah um yeah but that's like i think writing what you love and what you want to see in a story is really important because that's how you're going to find your audience and find the people that want to read what you're writing yeah do you have any any thoughts on that a big thing i love in writing and i use this a lot when i play dnd &D, not so as a dm like i use dnd &D as an example a lot because i i spend a lot of time doing it so it's a great example but whenever i'm a player I always have my start point for where my character is emotionally, mentally, psychologically, and physically. And then I have ideas of where the direction I want to take them, but I never have that end goal because I love a good game of improv. Yeah. I love making a choice, seeing the consequence, and reacting to that consequence. Mm -hmm. And that is a fun way to shape a character for me. And, you know, that's the whole premise of playing an improvisational game like D&D is you're reacting to choices and you're making choices to influence other choices. And it's just a whole cycle of growth and it's how we live our lives. It's how life is. And I love doing that with my writing because that's what I enjoy is I love, you know, I, I have the character make a choice and then I get to sit there and I'm like, and how is that going to affect everything yeah. around them? Cause I didn't think about it before. I'm like, what are the ramifications of them doing this action? And getting to think about that makes me really excited because I see all the possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. As you can tell from the energy coming off of this person, <laughs> um, writing what you love and what you know can really make writing more fun. And so I really think if you follow these three tips where you gamify your, your writing, you experience it both as the writer and the reader and the characters, and then you write what you love. I think your writing will be way more fun. Of course, add all the other tips and things that we talk about, um, but put it in your toolbox. Make it something that you can use for the future when you're struggling to write or when you have a day where you just hate your writing because no matter how great your story is, no matter how much you love it, there will be days where you don't like it as much. And so if you find those ways to have fun with it and make it a good experience, I think that will make your writing way better and I think your readers will understand and I think they'll know. So, yeah. As always, we're so grateful if you made it this far in the video. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe if you can. Completely free. You could always go back if you change your mind. We want to reach as many people as we can. And we got all of our resources in the description for you. Yeah. If you don't like, comment, or subscribe, we will dog ear all of your deluxe copies of your books. Um, so watch out for that. Uh, yeah. Check out our Etsy store with our writing resources and Patreon if you want to support us. It's only $5 a month. Really cheap, but it means a lot. 
Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.